Hello and welcome to Voices of Blue Scope, the podcast where we go behind the scenes of Blue Scope to meet the people who create strength every day. I'm your host, Martin Feld. Thank you for joining us. In this episode, we're featuring a group discussion about the certification of NS Blue Scope Vietnam's Phu Mi site by Responsible Steel. NS Blue Scope Vietnam is a leading metal coil coater and painter, and the Phu Mi site is the first to achieve the Responsible Steel International Standard in the Vietnamese steel industry, and the first pre-painted steel site to receive this recognition in Southeast Asia. It follows the certification that was awarded to Blue Scope's Western Port facility in October 2023 and iron and steel making operations in Port Kembla in February 2022. Our four participants in the interview that follows are Annie Heaton, CEO at Responsible Steel, Hai Trong An, Vice President HSC and Community at NS Blue Scope Vietnam, Nhat Vo, President at NS Blue Scope Vietnam, and Tim Rodstead, Head of Sustainability at Blue Scope. Together they explore the history, function and purpose of Responsible Steel, the significance of NS Blue Scope Vietnam's certification, and by extension, Blue Scope's long term vision for sustainable operations, economic contribution, and community engagement around the world. Let's shift to the discussion now. I'm Annie Heaton. I'm Chief Executive of Responsible Steel. Responsible Steel is an international standards and certification organization, and I run a team of 12 people who oversee the process of audits and the awarding of certificates to sites that have been able to demonstrate alignment with the 12 principles of the Responsible Steel International Standard. My name is Hai from NS Blue Scope Vietnam. I'm responsible for HSC and community. Very pleased to be here today and uh, very lucky for me to uh, be part of the, the team who, you know, like organize and, you know, implement the responsible steel, you know, requirement for the company. So my name is uh, Nhat. I'm the country president of Blue Scope in Vietnam. So in Vietnam, we have two business, one midstream and one downstream. Tim Rodstead, head of sustainability at Blue Scope. Been with the organization for coming up to six years now. Uh, and part of my role and my team's role is around sustainability strategy, sustainability reporting and engagement with international initiatives like this and Responsible Steel. Thanks to each of you for your opening introductions and for agreeing to join this recording of the Voices of Blue Scope podcast. Turning to you first, Annie, I'd like to explore in greater detail the history and the purpose and the function of Responsible Steel. Can you please elaborate on that and why it's so important for Responsible Steel to work with steelmakers around the globe? Yes, yeah, so Responsible Steel was set up or was dreamt of around 10 years ago by steelmakers in different countries, in Australia and in Europe, who, together with civil society players, understood that there were no global standards for the industry on sustainability. And increasingly, there was a, a desire from stakeholders to understand what does good look like in the steel industry? and from steelmakers to be able to, to meet that expectation and demonstrate that they could meet that expectation. Rather than establishing a standard for Australia, a standard for Europe, a standard for the US, the idea was to create an international standard, very much as you would understand an ISO standard. And so Responsible Steel was formed in 2016 as a, an organisation, and the ambition was to drive the industry to really maximise its contribution to a sustainable society. And the standard itself is composed of all elements of sustainability, so the social side, the environmental side, and the, and the governance side, and enables any steelmaking site or steel processing site to demonstrate that the management practices and their performance align with international best practice. And it's as simple as that. It sounds simple, but actually when a site has to undergo an audit, it's, it takes a lot of preparation work and there's often a lot of learning in the process. And that's um, one of the great benefits of the way we have set up the scheme. And of course, once one's achieved certification, one is able to, to claim that their site has met an international standard. So anywhere in the world, it's recognisable. 
uh, as a credible standard that not just anybody can use and claim. So together, sites across the world, and we've got more than 80 sites now covering over 125 million tons of steel making capacity, uh, have got site cert- certification uh, and together are creating a, a movement towards a really sustainable steel industry. Responsible Seal started off as an initiative between organisations in Australia and, and Europe, but has spread at an incredible pace since then. And we now have certifications in over 15 countries, over 80 certifications that are, have been achieved so far. We have um, over 125 million tonnes of steelmaking capacity um, under certification. Uh, and that, that global reach extends to Brazil, uh, to North America, US and Canada, to obviously Europe uh, and Australia, to Korea, and and now to Vietnam. And we're really delighted that um, Vietnam is our, uh, the latest addition geographically. And I think every time a new site is certified, uh, we're bringing in a whole workforce as well into the family of Responsible Steel and into the mission of Responsible Steel, which is ultimately to drive a very responsible net zero steel industry across the world. Thank you very much for that explanation, Annie. That's very helpful in setting the context for this discussion. And now to Tim, can you please expand on Blue Scope's connection to Responsible Steel and the work that's been done so far? Uh, I'll touch on sort of our involvement in Responsible Steel, where it sort of started from. I think Annie touched on the early stages of the dream that was Responsible Steel and, and the involvement that Blue Scope people had in setting that dream and, and then turning that dream in, into reality. So there are a number of people that have been involved through the journey, but um, one very important member being Ross Davies, uh, who was heavily involved in the idea and the development of Responsible Steel as a standard, but also as the organisation as well. Um, so Ross preceded some of the work that, that I had been involved in in my six years of being here at Blue Scope and Involvement with Responsible Steel. So the journey has been, uh, it feels like a short time and a long time, as Annie has, has mentioned, setting the standard, um, you know, creating that civil society, organisations, a range of different um, members coming together to set what best practice looks like. And there was quite a journey to go through in the development of, of the international standard, which was launched at our Port Kembla Steelworks back in 2019. So you know, for our involvement in something like Responsible Steel is very similar to what Annie had touched on, which is it is a broad sustainability standard. So it's not just focusing on one element, be it climate change or greenhouse gas emissions or picking up pieces around safety, but it touches on all of the key sustainability aspects for steel and allows us to tell that integrated story with our stakeholders. So be it our customer stakeholders, our investor stakeholders or our employees of that we're going through the work to understand what good looks like and having an independent review that we're meeting that standard that has been set. So Port Kembla was our first site to be certified and there were some additional facilities that joined as part of that site certification, including the Spring Hill Midstream facility as well. And that was completed back in 2002. And we've been doing quite a bit of work over the last couple of years promoting responsible steel with our stakeholder groups and the value that it brings to us as an organisation and to them, particularly customers that are choosing our steel. I appreciate that further background, Tim. And following that, I'd like to drill down more specifically into the Vietnamese aspect and experience in this discussion. Nyat, would you please share your view on this responsible steel certification and how and why it's significant for your site? Firstly, I would say that the team, the leadership team in Vietnam, they are responsible leadership teams. And we all believe that by practicing and sharing the responsible still of the sustainability to the broader community. We believe that we can make the commodities uh, where we invest and work become a better place. And we also can build a better connection to our customer, to our suppliers, and to our employee, and they gain more trust from them. So, so that could be the first things. And the other thing for us is we are doing sustainability and ESGs in Vietnam anyway. So by getting the responsible steel certificate, it will integrate our activity into the daily operation. And we also can review it and improve it through a discipline process. Uh, And the last thing to me is um, the name, responsible steel. Responsible should be the keyword for every leader, not only inclusive, but could be anyone else in the industry. 
we have to believe that by doing the right things, choosing the right thing to do, the better outcome will come to us. Uh, that's what we should do. Choosing the right thing to do. That's such a good way to put it. Thank you for that, Nyat. And now turning to Hai, I'd love to know more about your role at the Fumi site and how you were involved in the Responsible Steel audit and certification. Can you shed some light on that for us, please? And maybe explain what goes on at NS Blue Scope Vietnam at that site on a daily basis? You know, Blue Scope uh, Vietnam, NS Blue Scope Vietnam is the third factory uh, achieve this certificate. So that's the reason why I think uh, we are like the pioneer in this uh, in this region, to be honest. And that caused us, you know, many challenges uh, as well because during the certification, because we start with the project team and then after, you know, one year, uh, we face some issue and we really set up another project team. And I, I was, you know, like nominated as a leader to follow up and work with, you know, like key stakeholders, especially corporate team like Team Daniela to make it happen. And through the process, uh, you know, I also uh, learned many things. For example, like how we can cooperate each other, you know, inside the company, particular in Vietnam, for example, how we engage other team to join. And, you know, together we can show that, you know, uh, more than, you know, like more than 300 requirements from the standard, you know, already, you know, apply. However, you know, here and there, because, you know, in the daily basis, we operate and, you know, do many things. However, when during the audit process, very hard to show that we have very clear, you know, structure uh, to manage, you know, the, 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 the requirement. And by the end of the day, you know, through, you know, many, you know, interaction section and support from the corporate, and other function, uh, finally, we go into the, the end stage when, you know, the certification become true. And, you know, that's the reason why we, we are here today to talk about that. And on that journey, is there something that you're most proud of at NS Blue Scope Vietnam, a particular area in which you've all made progress that has been recognized in this certification by Responsible Steel? The teamwork spirit because uh, I think uh, many requirements, you know, already, you know, asked to demonstrate. And that is, I think that is simply, you know, technical. However, I'm proud of to be in the very good team when I have very good, you know, support from corporate and regional and in-country in country team as well. So that reason why I think the uh, second thing is, it's not just proud of, but I feel lucky because uh, that new to us, and through this, you know, certification process, uh, we learn and hopefully, uh, you know, get things that is very difficult. However, maintaining it another big, you know, challenge. So the reason why, how we can leverage and how we can, you know, build all of requirement into our daily operational practices on site. Yes, maintaining that teamwork and momentum and embedding those lessons into daily operations, that's all so important. Thank you, Hai. And I'd like to turn back to you for a moment, Tim, in your role in global sustainability at Blue Scope, what are some of the most important lessons that have been learned or what do you see as opportunities arising from dealing with so many different cultures and sites around the world at Blue Scope? What can you tell us about that? I think what has been really interesting from the practice of the FUMI site going through the certification process is it's in a, in a region where I think the focus on sustainability is growing. It's still in its early stages, but the commitment from the leadership team to pursue uh, certification at this early stage, I think, is a, a pretty amazing kind of step to take. Uh, and then with the achievement of the site certification that has just happened. That for me is a kind of a really strong leadership position from from the site, particularly where in some of our other regions where we might be connected to a steelmaking facility. Our Vietnam site is a midstream site coated and painting facility that's sitting within Vietnam and having that direct connection to the market. So that's unique in terms of, uh, I guess, from a country perspective of our previous sites are being certified. But I think what's really interesting for Vietnam is not only seeing that writing on the wall. But as, as High has mentioned, the lessons that have come out 
through the Responsible Steel certification. I think because it covers the broad nature of the sustainability topics, it gives an indication of what is either going to be important today that we can hear in market being climate change and safety, but also the greater focus on some of the other areas, which is around responsible sourcing. And so I think many of the lessons we've learned through the Vietnam audit, but also into our other sites is where there may be some opportunities to improve our processes internally or the, the relationships or the connections within our sites to understand what is the, the interplay between some of the activities that we might do in, in something like safety that may then cross over into what we do around our engagement with our suppliers. Thank you, Tim. And at this point, I'd like to bring Annie back into the discussion. Annie, is there something in the process of working with our colleagues at NS Blue Scope in Vietnam that you've learnt or particularly appreciated? Naturally, Responsible Steel is working with sites and cultures all around the world. What has stood out to you particularly in this audit process with Vietnam? Well, I think what uh, really singles Vietnam out is that this is the first certification in country. In fact, it's the first Responsible Steel certification in Southeast Asia. So for me, that demonstrates real leadership. You know, it's there are a lot of countries where one site will get certified and then other companies want to come in and get certified to be able to compete with that leadership profile. But in Vietnam, this is the first site and this is not a country where we have, for example, in other countries, we have a responsible steel recognized in the local building code, for example. But in, in Vietnam, that isn't the case yet. So this is really leadership. And I really appreciate what Mr. Newt has said about responsibility sort of embodying what leadership is all about. And, and I think that's really heartening to hear that this is not only about wearing a badge, it's about embodying the spirit of responsible steel. Fantastic. Now, I may be wrong, but I am going to throw it out there. Annie, am I correct in saying that you actually have quite a deep understanding of Vietnam as a country and a culture and maybe even speak the language? Do I have my facts straight there? Yeah, I was lucky enough to live in Vietnam for four years. And uh, it's a wonderful country, wonderful country. And it's a very diverse country. And it's also a very organised country. And I can really sense that during the audit, the, the way in which the team was organised was a real testimony to the culture that I know very well. And I'm very pleased that uh, that was very supportive in, in the achievement of the certification. It's wonderful that you have that extra appreciation of or connection to the culture, Annie. So. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I suppose my last formal question for this podcast episode is directed at Nyat, although I would invite everyone to contribute after him uh, if you have something to say. Uh, Nyat, heartfelt congratulations on this certification. It's very significant. And when you look to the future, what excites you building on this certification for your site, for your team? What's next? Yeah, so uh, this really is really the right things. And uh, firstly, I got to say thank you to, to our corporate the people team. Uh, the project team here is uh, high under his leadership. Uh, we, we got what we, we have today. So that's really the right tactics. As I said at the beginning, uh, when we start apply for this, we even don't know we will be the first one in ASEAN or in Vietnam. What we like to do is because it's the right thing we want to do. Uh, that's good for the communities. And for my feeling, the more we engage the employee to explain to them what does it mean, uh, responsible steel, how is it linked to the sustainability, the ESG, and the more we educate and talk to our people, the better connection we have with them. And we realize that our people love it. And that's really the best price for me. In our plan, beside the employee, uh, we plan to share it in the way sharing the knowledge, not to marketing it, to share it in the way we want still people to understand. We want the industry to understand about ESG, about sustainability through the responsible steel framework. And we want everyone to practice this. And that will be the best thing. And I also think that that will be the wish from responsible steel because they want a better community. So that is part of our plan. I might just sort of say that I think we've talked about the leadership role that Vietnam has played seeking out this certification. This is the first stage or the first step of the process, achieving the certification. And the next part, which I know that the Vietnam team are working very hard on, is then communicating the value of responsible steel to our stakeholders. And I think that's a really important role to play because we're going out and engaging with other 
steel organizations, you know, we'll be talking about it at conferences, engaging with our end users or the builders and construction organizations to say, what does responsible steel mean for them? And he mentioned earlier about the role of sort of the green building certification schemes and the, you know, there's going to be a task for us to engage with those in Vietnam and say, this is the value that Responsible brings to your community and to your stakeholders through that certification area. So this is a really, really important milestone. And I'm really excited to see the Vietnam team take the next steps and promote the role of Responsible Steel and the value it brings to its stakeholders going forward. I'd just like to say, say one thing, Martin. There's something very distinctive about the Responsible Steel audit process, which stands out from the the standard sort of ISO process. And that is that when the auditors visit the site, having looked at all the paperwork, they then interview not just the management of the site, not just those responsible for the different areas, whether it's safety or environment or water, but they also interview stakeholders. So they interview the workforce, they interview contractors, they interview people in the community, and local organisations that that have a stake. And what they want to see is a consistency across the understanding that those different stakeholder groups have. It's a very innovative way of looking at sustainability, but it means that the site and the community need to share the same understanding. And that's a very powerful thing. And I think for Blue Scope Vietnam to have achieved that is something that I think they should be very, very proud of. It's, it's, it's really is a step above any, any other certification that, that I've been through. And I think it demonstrates an openness and a transparency that we really want to see because not just because it's a good thing in itself, but because it breeds better results, better understanding, better relationships and better learning. And I can hear from what Mr. Hai and Mr. Newt have said that there's a learning in the process. It's not just in the result. And I think that's, that's something that's um, really worth highlighting. Agreed. Thank you very much. Now, before we conclude this discussion, are there points that any of you would like to make? Anything that I haven't asked you? I want to say to Mr. Hai and Mr. Newt, now I have the opportunity. I want to say, Chuk Mung Kek Ban Da Duk Chen Yan Responsible Steel. Thank you. Yeah, your Vietnamese is very, very good. Yeah. May I take the chance to. To say thank you to Project Team and especially, you know, I personally, you know, appreciate the support from Team Daniela and other expertise, you know, in Blue Scott family. Because uh, to be honest, without your support, I don't think we can go that far and get the certification right now. Thank you. I've got one more thing to say, and we sort of talk about responsible steel being a very comprehensive standard and covering a range of areas. And probably one of the areas that the standard doesn't cover is whether the site has a baton course and whether all of the employees play at lunchtime in a competitive nature um, after visited the cafeteria. And so I think that needs to be one of the criteria in the health and safety and wellbeing section of the standard of which the Vietnam team will pass with flying colours. Excellent. Brilliant. Well, I want to thank all four of you for joining this episode of the Voices of Blue Scope podcast. It has been fantastic to hear the story behind Responsible Steel and to learn what this certification means to the team at NS Blue Scope Vietnam. So thank you all for your time today. Thank Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. you. We hope that you enjoyed the discussion about NS Blue Scope Vietnam's certification by Responsible Steel. And again, we thank Annie, Hai, Nyat and Tim for their participation. If you would like to learn more about what you just heard, make sure to view the list of topics in our show notes, which you can find in your web browser or podcast app. You can also visit relevant websites such as bluescope.com, nsbluescope.com vn and responsiblesteel.org. Thank you for listening to the Voices of Blue Scope podcast. We hope to have you again soon.